Hello all, as we continue to look at circular functions, and today we're going to look at some further symmetry properties and also the Pythagorean identity. Um, Pythagorean identity comes up a little bit, so it definitely needs to be there in the back of your mind, but the main part of this is this um, whole idea of complementary relationships or the ability to, if we're told sine of some angle, we could figure out cos of some other angle. There's, there's a lot of symmetry there around the circle, and I'll um, show you where this all comes from in a second, but let's just have a look at our table of values from previous slides that we looked at. I've taken out 10 out of the table, but we can see as the angle increases, and we've took, and if you think about a unit circle geometrically, as the angle increases, well, the vertical component gets bigger, and we can see the sine increases as we go up, and we talked about that previously. Same thing for, co or the reverse of that for cos, as we go around our angle, the horizontal component to the line, that horizontal component of it, the x coordinate, it gets smaller and smaller. So, um, gets smaller. The other thing I want to point out is that sine of 30 is half, while cos of 60 is half. And also, sine of 60 is root 3 on 2, and cos of 30 is root 3 on 2. And then, of course, sine and cos of 45 are the same because the horizontal it's a perfect it's a 45 degree right angle triangle so the horizontal and vertical components are the same so where can we go from here how can we use this information and think about it it turns out that there's these relationships below um so when we're in the first quadrant Sine of pi on 2 minus some angle is equal to cos of that angle. And let's just go with, say, if we said uh, pi on 6. We'll start with pi on 6. We, we found cos of pi on 6. It means that we can also find, if we go, our point's frozen for a second. There we go, finally started working. If we go backwards, that means exactly the same, pi on two, take away pi on six, which happens to be, uh, times that by three, three pi on six, would be two pi on six. Sine of two pi on six is the same as cos of pi on six. Um, and these relationships hold. Now, looking at these rules, they may look a little bit complex. Writing down your reference book, for sure. But let's look at it geometrically, and it'll make a whole lot more sense. So here's a really nice, fancy unit circle grid. We can see our x and y coordinates are labeled up to a radius of 1, and that's our x, that's our y. So let's use something a little bit different that we haven't dealt with. We've been dealing with 30, 45, 60s, but let's deal with something a little different. If I look at sine of 15 degrees, so 15 degrees is there on my unit circle. So there's my line. How big is the vertical component of it? That's what sine is asking, or what is my y coordinate? And if I go across, on the grid, it's about there. It is equal to about 0 0.25, okay? Now, according to the relationship on the previous page, uh, sine of some angle should equal to cos of, and pi on two, or in this case, 90 minus some angle. They should be the same. So in our case, if we took sine of 15, that should be exactly the same as cos of 90 take away 15. It should be the same as cos of 75 degrees. Well, let's look at 75 degrees then. 75 degrees is up here, and I want cos of 75. What is that equal to? Well, 75, that is the horizontal component. So that's our x coordinate. So if I come all the way down here, 
we can see that is also equal to 0 0.25. And so I took, that was my line up to 75 degrees. I might mark that also in red, show that that was coming. A little bit crooked there. But they give us the same value. Now let's look at these two triangles we've formed. We formed that one and we also formed that one. Now if we go to the respective axes, this one in here has an angle of 15 degrees, has a radius of 1. This one in here, if we actually take our angle from the y-axis, which is sort of what this 90 take away x is doing, is start at the y-axis and then come back some angle, well, that's also 15 degrees. It also has a radius of equal to 1. Those two triangles are identical. And that's where these relationships come from. So if we think geometrically, it makes complete sense that the vertical component of some angle taken from the x-axis is exactly the same as the horizontal component of that same angle taken from the y-axis. So let's go over to the second quadrant. I'll leave that one there and we'll do another angle. We'll do uh, 155. 155 degrees, which 155 is about there. So there's my line. And let's do um, sine of that again. Sine of 155. And so that's asking for the vertical component. So the vertical component of that is about 0 0.42. 0 0.42. Sine of 55. Now, that's gone around 155 degrees, but that would also be the same as starting at the negative x-axis and going 180, that's uh, 25 degrees. I could build the exact same triangle coming off the y-axis, coming off 25 degrees. So if I go 90 plus 20 is 110, 115, that gets me there. And if I look at the horizontal component of that, so I've also gone 25 degrees, that horizontal component should be exactly the same. So we're trying to find cos of, and we've gone, and if we look at the second coordinate relationship, we're starting at x, or sorry, pi on 2 plus x, or in our case, because we're dealing with degrees, we've got 90 plus x should be the same as some original x value of sine. So we're doing, um, what did I just do? I've used the wrong one, I need to be using this one. But let's just look at it geometrically. Okay, sine of 155 is 0 0.42. Uh, let's think of cos of, and what do we say? That's 115. Yeah. Cos of 115 is also equal to 0 0.42. Now, there's one change here, though. The x component of this is negative. So the size of it, the actual x component, the coordinate over here, okay, that's at negative 0 0.42 comma 0. Um, the size of it's exactly the same, we just need to realize because we're in the second quadrant, the x component will actually be negative. So the magnitudes of them are the same, it's just that one is the negative of the other. Um, so there's this symmetry that occurs in the unit circle where cos of one angle will always be equal to sine of some other angle because it's the exact same triangle, it just happens to be reflected about the line y equals x or y equals negative x. We've just flipped it. We can see going from that blue has just been flipped up over here. It's just a reflection of it. 
Um, so that's where these relationships come from. You can remember those rules. They're handy, but I really suggest if you can think geometrically about the unit circle, physically, where is the line? How roughly big will the X component be? What's the equivalent if I mirror that? What could I create the same Y component that's the same? So let's have a go at these. So we're told sine of some angle is equal to 0 0.1, cos of some angle is 0 0.7, and tan of another angle, three different angles, is 0 0.2. Find the values of blah. Okay, so we've got B, so that's our information we need to use for the first one. Let's do a little diagram to make sure we understand what's going on. We have some angle that's giving me cos um, is equal to 0 0.7. So my horizontal component is 0 0.7, so that's what about there. So that must mean that's that's my angle. Yeah. I want to now know, and it uses the symbol beta. Okay. I want to now know, that was the x coordinate. I want to now know sine of pi on 2, take away that angle. So I go all the way around to pi on 2, which is here. The 90 degrees and then I'm going to come back that same angle and I'm going to get to some new point here and so I've gone I on to take away whatever that angle was and I want to know the vertical component of it I want to come across here and I want to know the y coordinate again very obvious that that length there is the same as that length there they're the same angle same triangle, they've both got a radius of 1, they're just going from different axes. Um, so that would have to be equal to 0 0.7. That's what we were told this length here was. That was 0 0.7. So the equivalent triangle will also have a y coordinate of 0 0.7. Same thing again for part b. We're now going to sine pi on 2 plus that angle. So draw another circle we started we had that original situation that's beta we're now going to pi on 2 and adding that much angle so we're over here so that in there is beta and i want to know sine of it so again i want to know what the y component is now we can again clearly see they're the same triangle, so that distance up there will also be 0 0.7. So it's equal to 0 0.7. The only thing we want to also get used to checking is what's the sign. And in this case, in the second quadrant, sign still stays positive. So that has stayed positive. Uh, now we're going to go on to C and D. And in this case, we're using alpha, so we have to use this bit of information. So we're told. Again, okay, let's draw another picture. We're told for some angle alpha, we get a sine value of 0 0.1. So that's a vertical component of 0 0.1. So my angle must be really small to form that. So that there, that's my alpha angle. So really, really tiny. What I'm now doing instead though, is I'm going to pi on 2 plus alpha. So again, pi on 2 is 90 degrees. Add another alpha. So I've stuck my little alpha in there. But now I want cos. I want the x component. So I come down here. And I want to know that length. Now I was told the y component was 0 0.1. Obviously this x component is also 0 0.1. So it's equal to 0 0.1. But cos in the second quadrant, we can see we have a negative. So we can do that. Uh, last one, D, we're going to pi on 2, take away alpha. So same situation. We've gone to pi on 2. Now we're taking away alpha. So draw a bit of a circle. So I'm coming back this way, alpha amount. And again, it's really small angle and I want the x component of it so come down I want that distance there 
and it's obvious again that that needs to be 0 0.1, so it's equal to 0 0.1. Now is it positive or negative? Well, the x component in the first quadrant is positive, so it's just 0 0.1. Now you could have done those a fair bit quicker just using those four rules there, but it's great to know where those four rules come from so that if you ever forget or get confused, because it might say um, sine of alpha is equal to 0 0.1, find cos of 16 pi plus alpha. Yeah, well, 16 pi, that's just that's just a trick to go, oh, we've gone round and round the circle eight times, and then I'm going to go again another just little bit of alpha. And you can think, okay, that's where it is. Do I need the horizontal or vertical component? And you can work from there. Um, so that's why thinking geometrically really helps. Uh, last one, tan, okay, so tan pi on 2 plus theta, okay, so let's draw a little circle, and I've got lots of working out space, so let me, tan, pi, tan theta equals 0 0.2, so that's really small, so my tangent must be really small, so there, so that would be my theta, that'll give me about a 0 0.2 tangent length. Now I'm going to pi on 2 plus theta, which is over there, and that's going to create a massive, massive one. Mm -hmm. Right, I've gone blank. Oh, the other thing is tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta. The only problem is I don't have information for zero point two is equal to sine theta on cos theta. Hmm. Might leave that one there, I'll come back. I just don't want to waste time in this video because we've got one last thing to do, which is the Pythagorean identity. Um, there's probably a trick in here where theta actually happens to be the same as alpha. Got a, no, not close enough. Might be. Um, but we'll come back to it. But Pythagorean identity. For any right angle triangle, we know that a squared plus b squared is c squared, or we also call it h squared. And in a unit triangle, well, one side is cos theta, that's our x component. The other side is sine theta, which is our y component. Um, so if we square one side, the two short sides, that clearly needs to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. Um, so we get this really nice identity which says sine theta squared plus cos theta squared is equal to 1. Uh, to read the squared, um, it's a habit to write or a notation thing that if we have sine of some angle all squared, we actually write the squared here. Um, it means to take sine of the angle, then square the whole thing. Not exactly sure why we write it like this and we couldn't just, it does avoid having to write brackets. Um, it does clearly mean that the squared's applied to everything. It's not just applied to the angle first and then going from there. But that's what it means. If you do see the square on top of the sine or the cos, it means sine of that angle, square the whole thing. Um, so, oh, and I've left all. Okay, realized I did. Uh, made a mistake right near the start of this question. Um, did took the square root instead of squared a number. So I'm redoing again. Um, but I was saying we use the Pythagorean identity. And the reason we need, know we need to find the Pythagorean identity is we're told sine of x and we're asked to find cos of x and tan of x. We can't use the previous identities. Um, we can't use 
these sort of equivalence ones because we're being asked to find the exact same angle. We're not doing cos of pi on two take away x. If we we're doing something like that, well then yeah, we could use the other ones, but because we're being asked to find the exact same angle, we need to use the, um, use the Pythagorean identity. Uh, the other thing to note is we are given a domain, which will come in important near the end. So uh, Pythagorean identity says sine squared of x plus cos squared of x is equal to one, and we're told sine of x is equal to negative a quarter. Square all that will be equal to cos squared of x is equal to one. And this is where the mistake goes. When I squared the one, I put one, but then I took the square root of four for some reason instead of squaring it. So it should be 16 plus cos squared x is equal to one. From there, we take one on 16 from both sides. So we're left with cos squared x is equal to 15 on 16. And then we take the square root of both sides to move the squared off the cos of x. So cos of x is equal to the square root of 15 on 16, which is equal to square root of 15 on square root of 16. And because we've taken the square root of both sides, it should be plus or minus, plus or minus is equal to plus or minus root 15 on 4, because square root of 16 is 4. Now, we technically have two answers here. We have cos of some angle is equal to either positive or negative. Cos, again, is asking for the x component, okay, or horizontal component. Okay, so is it negative? Is it over to the left of, is our component over here negative, or is it over here positive? Well, this is where our domain comes in important. We're told our original angle is between pi, which is over here, and three pi on two, which is here. So our angle is somewhere in here. That's very obvious then that our cos, our horizontal component, must be negative. So given the domain, cos of x must be equal to negative root 15. From there to find tan of an angle, since we already know the sine of the angle and cos of the angle is um, fairly straightforward, we just get to um, use tan theta is equal to uh, sine, and I should use x, sine x on cos of x. That's sort of just saying tan x is the same as opposite over adjacent, opposite being our vertical component, which is sine, uh, the adjacent component, which is cos. Um, so we get tan of x is equal to sine was a negative quarter divided by negative root 15 on four. Now to divide fractions, we can multiply by the reciprocal, so we end up times by 4 on root 15. Uh, the 4 and the 4 are going to cancel, the negative and the negative are going to cancel, so we are left with 1 on root 15. Now you want to get in the habit of rationalizing the denominator, which means get rid of the third in the denominator. To do that we just multiply by whatever the denominator is, top and bottom, and that's going to give us root 15 on 15. So that's what tan of x is. Um, so fairly straightforward. At no stage did it actually say find x itself. Um, and we, we don't know what the angle is from our table of values that gives us a quarter or root 15 on 4. So it's just using the identity to work along. We didn't actually need to find the angle itself. I uh, hope that helps. Have a good day. Any questions like normal, stick them in the comments on Google Classroom, send me an email or ask in class. See ya.